The BRSCC BMW Compact Cup is brought to you by Nankang Tires and Gas Shocks. Welcome back to Snetterton, a very busy assembly area for the second of the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup races. The usual suspects are in the top four, Parks, Daly, Jones and Hunter, and a lot of people saying the race is going to be between one of those four. However, this is Snetterton, we could have a few other tricks up the sleeve for some of the other drivers. Of course, we've got our Masters winner from earlier, Mr May, he's going to be an interesting one. However, as well as David May, we've also got Gordon McMillan in the Masters class, and he wasn't that far off the pace of David in race one. You're going to give it another crack, aren't you? I certainly am, I'm going to do my best. Me and David have had some great battles over the years and um, I want to beat him. I want to get a Masters trophy. <laughs> so what is it that's so addictive about racing in the BMW Compact Cup compared to other classes of racing? Well, I think two things really. You've got a great bunch of people, a really sociable group of people and um, it's really close racing. And you can't spend a million pounds on your car and win. It's not checkbook racing. You have to be able to drive the car. And obviously with people like David May to go wheel to wheel with, it should be quite a fight for you. Yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll give us a show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much, Jake. I'm certainly looking forward to this one. The grid lining up the way in which they finished race one. So Parks, Daly, Jones, Hunter, Griffiths and May, your uh, top six on the grid. Then Gordon McMillan and Paul Hinson, Ben Huntley and Keith Towers, Alan Caulfield just outside the top ten in race one and Mark Skeets one to watch from the outside of race six. Then it's Wayne Flint and Matt Flowers, Craig Jameson and Liam McGill. Mike Doble and Aaron Morgan. The rest of the field filing in behind, but uh, this is going to be, I hope, a repeat of what we saw in race one with Matt Parks most certainly taking the fight to Stephen Daly and Ian Jones and Owen Hunter both there equally determined to try and take some points out of Daly if they uh, if they can. But uh, Matt Parks this time around starting from the inside of row one. In theory, the grippier side of the road because that's actually the racing line up against the pit wall. A bit more rubber laid down there. Let's see what happens five second board is raised look at the various on boards that we have up and down the order we're on board with Owen Hunter though as the revs start to rise we are ready to go racing around number four of the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup away we go equal start by the looks of it from both front row men on board with Paul Hintz a bit further back there lots of jostling in the middle of the pack that looks like the number 82 car diving to the outside line there that uh, is Craig Jameson but as the leaders turn their way into towards Rich's corner Matt Parks has done it he's converted pole position into the race lead at the first corner Owen Hunter here battling away with Ian Jones that's going to become I think a season long battle as we suspected last time out at uh, Brands Hatch lock up there from Hunter on the outside Tom Griffiths is still ahead of, of uh, David May as well fifth and sixth but David May has got the Gordon McMillan right behind him. So the two of the Masters competitors that we were talking about in the assembly area, they've got themselves together on track. And look, they're side by side. In fact, McMillan's gone through, but then runs out wide and David May is sideways. Oh no! David May sideways in front of the pack. Let's hope no one collects him. He's stranded in the middle of the road. Wayne Flint, Alan Caulfield have to go out wide to avoid him. That is such a shame and not the way that we wanted that battle to go. Well, back at the front of the field, Stephen Daly has got Ian Jones trying to get up the inside of him. He might be able to do this down in towards Hamilton. No, Daly it is that hangs on. We've got um, Keith Towers there in the midfield. There's uh, Phil Sharp. There's Wayne, F uh, no, it's not Wayne Flint, is it? A bit further back, but there are Wayne Flint, one of those cars, and certainly was delayed in all of that uh, up at uh, Palmer's. And I don't know, actually, whether David May has been able to continue. I think he has, uh, but quite some way down the order. So that was quite the dramatic start to the race. On board now with Keith Towers. That is Wayne Flint in front of us. And Keith Towers trying to uh, find a way through as they make their way onto the Bentley Straight. There is Phil Sharp. He's got uh, Mikey Doble, that is, in behind him as the leaders again are jostling for position. Lucky and Joe's trying to get around the outside there of Stephen Daly down into Brundle Nelson. Then it's Paul Hinson, Ben Huntley, and Mark Skeets. That's this little trio of car. Hinson, the black and yellow car. Huntley, the black, grey, and green. Then the yellow and black is Mark Skeets as they bounce their way over the curbs at Nelson. This lot just about, I think, escaped David May's rotating car, but it was as he came back on the track. The cars behind that got uh, caught up in it, unfortunately. Now with Keith Towers, that's Alan Caulfield behind us as we turn our way through the long, long right hand. Look at him fighting the wheel there through the corner and corner. And onto the brakes into Murray's for the first time. Wayne Flint in front of them there 
various TME difficult handling that is. There's a gain ground out of that. There's Mike Doble, Doble Senior, just ahead of Phil Sharp. The leaders then, it is Park that leads the way. Daly second, actually break the waistline if we and Joe did third, haven't they, over the second half of that. Opening lap, Daly out wide over the grass. It's not really conducive to quick lap times. Hard on the brakes now, the KC Motorsport car. Certainly keeping Parks honest here, but he's back in a move going to uh, allow him through. Jones second with to third, and they've got Griffiths and David May right with them. They've not really been able to get away with leading two so far in this race. Really, we expected it to be Jones and Hunter that would keep Daly honest this year. If we can throw Matt Parks into the mix as well, and possibly even the likes of Tom Griffiths and Gordon McMillan, who's not David May, it's Gordon McMillan behind, uh, then um, we're in for quite a season, I think. Onto the brakes into Agostini again, lap number two. Now Jones now having to really go quite defensive to keep his sparring partner from all three races we've had so far this year, Owen Hunter at bay. Owen Hunter turns his way through Hamilton, Whoop, a bit wide there. On the exit of the corner, that might leave a gap on the either side into the to uh, Oggies there, but Hunter had to back out of it. These two are just so remarkably evenly matched, and that's what makes watching the race so entertaining, because um, you know that there's never going to be an easy pass, and even once they do get past each other, the chances are the place could change hands again, because they never really seem to have the, the speed difference between them to pull away, and that's what makes it very entertaining indeed for us watching. On board with Keith Towers there, Wade Flint in front of us, understeering a bit wide for the apex, and so Towers gets the better exit onto the Bentley straight, and Wade Flint, I think, might have to give this place up. He's still got the inside line, but the momentum was there with Hugh Towers. It was the Jones, Hunter, Griffiths and McMillan battle. Four cars dicing over the bottom step of the podium. Back through the core of the tradepricecars.com machine of Owen Hunter there. Sideways of the race leader though, Matt Parks, as he's really trying to pull away from Stephen Daly, but I don't think that's going to be that easy to do. Daly's certainly going to uh, keep him honest. And with the slipstream effect in these cars, they're not particularly aerodynamic, not particularly powerful, so it's definitely uh, likely that we'll see the field remain pretty close together throughout, as we did in race one. But Stephen Daly looking racy now, just peeking to the inside there as he goes down the pit straight, across the start-finish line. The rest of the field flashed through. There's Jones, there's Hunter, there's Griffiths, there's McMillan. Steve Davies, second place reigning champion, Scotsman, who often goes well at places like Brands Hatch because in some ways it's quite similar to Knock Hill where he grew up learning to race. It has been the case in the past where we've got some of the more wide open circuits like Snetterton, like Silverstone, he's possibly struggled a little bit more for pace and that is going to be at those circuits where the likes of Parks, Hunter and Jones are really going to try and take points out of him. Jones, they haven't managed to so far, but Matt Parks has at least managed to win the first race. And winning this one would not give him the championship lead unless Daly were to fall quite, uh, quite a bit further down the order, but it would put him right in contention for possibly being second place in the points and leaving Stetson in early days, of course, in the championship yet. But uh, nonetheless, things looking good for uh, Matt Parks so far this weekend. Of course, if he has to start really defending at any point, could yet bring this group of four cars behind back onto their tail because they're less than a second behind because it is if the top two start holding each other up that really changes everything down through Williams they go try to avoid that tire stack on the inside otherwise you'll do quite a bit of damage to your car Steve Daly in the slipstream again now as he comes down the Bentley straight we ride on board with the Scotsman we'll see for ourselves here the effect that the slipstream has you can see he's just inching closer and closer and closer to the back of Matt Park's car but the straight just comes up frustratingly short for Daly just as he was starting to really build some speed up he arrives at the next braking zone and has to back off so he needs to just be that car length or so closer going onto the straight to be able to make full advantage of that it looks like Gordon McMillan has possibly had a moment somewhere and dropped a bit further back from Tom Griffiths than he was before. So Tom is now all on his own in fifth as they're starting to pair off in this leading quartet. Top two dicing for the lead, uh, Parks and Daly. And then the next two, Jones and Hunter, are still separated from the top two by that second and a bit. But they are pulling away from Griffiths and even behind them. Back across the start finish line, cement just down on the track there for where that oil was laid in the uh, in the first race. Across the line they go, and Matt Parks. So far, so good. He's had all of the right answers to Stephen Daly's questions, but we know that Stephen's going to go for this. 
past, even as much as he understands the significance of consistency and scoring the points and finishing all the races, he's a racer at heart. And we saw several times in the last few seasons when he was in the thick of the championship battles how uh, important he thought it was to try and uh, go for race wins when they were available. And uh, Stephen won't be content to sit behind in second place. It was a long time being the Victoria car race around Prio who um, always lecture racing drivers on the importance of going for race victories. Why settle for second when you can get a race victory? Why settle for fourth when you can get third? Every point matters. And when we get to the end of the season, so often in the Dan Tires BMW Compact Cup, the championship is decided by a handful of points. And the driver who misses out on the title invariably looks back at his season and thinks there were so many opportunities where I could have taken those points if I'd only gone and gone for it and uh, taken a bit more of a risk. Checking on some battle going on behind here. This is uh, Phil Sharp, and that's David May, who's trying to try and make it three arrests on the inside there, or considered it. So David May recovering from his first lap speed is uh, just now starting to make his presence known in the top half of the field. We'll see whether he can make it into the top 20 and then how much further on the order he can get. Leaders then have made their way through the midfield. This is Simon Welch. It's very relaxed driving style for Simon there as he turned it down in towards Palmer's. Leaders though underneath the Stetterton Bridge. Matt Parks again keeping that car length or so advantage over Stephen Daly at the end of the straight. So Stephen still hasn't really been able to mount a serious, uh, serious challenge for the race lead yet. Oh, sideways for Parks though now. This could be interesting because Stephen will sense blood in the water now. You see that little moment for Parks. Maybe Parks has used his tyres a little bit too much. Maybe Parks is just starting to feel the pressure. The car is moving around an awful lot more than Stephen Daly's car, as you can see that for sure. And so Stephen, who runs very wide, absolutely triggered the uh, uh, track limit sensor there on the exit of Murray's Corner, did uh, Stephen Daly. He needs to be careful not to do that too often, otherwise he'll start having five or ten seconds added on to the end of his race time. And he can little afford that with the field so tightly much behind, it would lose him several positions and several championship points as a result. Which is they go again, Daly tried to blow the speed out of there and attack maybe down towards the Wilson hair, but he looks to the inside, trying to goad Matt Parks into defending in the hope that he might outbreak himself a little bit wide, but Matt Parks is a very, very wise head on those shoulders. He knows how to race, he knows how to defend, and he knows when to defend and when not to defend. There's no point defending if you don't need to because it's just an unnecessary loss of momentum. Harbours. Agostini is the next possible overtake opportunity and Daly is pretty close actually, he's certainly close enough to have a little look on the inside, Matt Parks knows that so he moves over to the, the middle of the road, he didn't move right over to the inside though because if he'd have done that he knew he'd cost himself speed on the exit of the corner. Daly can't get the overlap on the exit, still Ian Jones in third ahead of Owen Hunter, as the lead, uh, lead two turn from Hamilton is becoming less and less likely, I think, that Daly's going to do this, although Parks is now going to have to defend into the right-hander at uh, Oggies. There's Mike Doble. He is still dicing away there. Tim Scott Andrews, the yellow and red car behind him. David May has now cleared this group, incidentally. So he is, there he goes, flashes through the screen, going through Oggies' corner. 65 there is uh, Mike Doble. He's got two Dobles together, actually. Mike ahead of Mikey, uh, his son, and then Tim Scott Andrews. Then a very smoky David Ashford behind him. That was tyre smoke. Ah, look at this. Stephen Daly going for the race lead. He's on the inside, is he? No, not quite. But I thought he might have had the overlap then, coming down the inside into Brooklyn Nelson. He heard me say that I didn't think he was going to make this move stick and immediately went on the attack again. But look, just that one straight of running side by side has allowed Ian Jones, Owen Hunter, and even Tom Griffiths to close back in. So another little bit of side by side racing for these two. We're looking at a five way fight for the race win as again we get into the latter part of the race now. Only a couple of minutes left on the clock. And this is when it all starts to come alive. Matt Parks again very sideways there through Corum. Down into the left hander at Murray's. Almost contact there between he and Steve Daly, but they keep it clean. Same goes for Ian Jones, no hits behind. And Steve Daly now all of a sudden does look like the quicker of the two. He's in the slipstream again now as they come down across the start finish line. He has one more chance to do this, I think, before Jones and Hunter are onto his tail. One more failed overtaking opportunity, uh, overtaking attempt though, and they'll be right there with him. Steve Daly takes a nice one wide line there into Richard's corner, trying to get the cut back on the exit to get the inside line for Wilson, but Park sees it coming a mile off, ducks to the middle of the road to defend. Daly goes to the outside on the way in, does Parks get the car stopped from the corner? Looks like he does. So Steve Daly 
frustratedly for the time being. Can't find a way through. That's a, a rather battered Liam McGill's car, number 62, not in showroom condition. Rather crumpled nose to that car. Please keep me on going. Race leaders then make their way through Palmer's for what I think is going to be the ultimate time of asking. And Stephen Daly still cannot find a way past Matt Park. Down into the left hand, they're about to go. Think about going to the inside, and then a really late lunge. What a move from Stephen Daly. He will take the race lead, will he, from Matt Parks? Parks out wide over the curb, and he's on the outside for the next corner. And yes, Daly goes through. Sensational overtaking. Stephen Daly, that is why he is the reigning champion. Ian Jones follows him through to second as well, and Matt Parks down to third. But where on earth did that come from? Steve Daly, he, he lulled Matt Parks into a false sense of security then, and he made Matt think that he wasn't going to attack. And then when Matt didn't defend, Daly just launched it at the apex, got to the corner, and crucially got the car stopped. Because, he, because if he hadn't have done, there was no way that Matt Parks could have avoided the, the uh, collision. But it was a, a beautifully judged manoeuvre by Steve Daly. Now, I've seen him do a similar thing in the past to James Gordon, actually, but it ended in contact. That was at uh, Castle Coombe last year. This time around, though, it was judged to perfection. So Matt Parks down to third place now, then, with Owen Hunter now on his tail in fourth. Owen Hunter on the grass in fourth, <laughs> and that brings uh, Tom Griffiths uh, into uh, contact with him again in fifth. But you've got a feel of it there for Matt Parks because he really did nothing wrong. He just he just didn't think that he had to defend into Agostini, and uh, Stephen Daly proved it wrong. It's not over yet, though, because, of course, uh, Ian Jones also came through with Steve Daly, and it's now Ian who is applying the pressure uh, to Stephen Daly. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, Ian Jones uh, having a real race with James Gordle here in Stettenham, and he tried to get through on the very last corner and had to uh, stri cut straight across the grass at the final turn. And uh, that was uh, a very uh, particularly memorable ending to a race. Ian Jones then gave the position back on the run back to the start-finish line. Last lap board has been hung out, by the way, so this is the final lap of the weekend. Stephen Daly. And he hang on to the race victory. Ian Jones pushing on in second place, though, as he tries to stay with him. If he can stay close enough to get a slipstream down the back straight, then anything is possible. Oh, and that helps as well. Daly running a bit deep there into uh, the Wilson hairpin. So Jones, he's going to be closer than ever now as we go through Palmer's. Can he do to Daly what Daly did to Parks a lap ago? That's the next corner, Agostini, where uh, Daly found a way into the race lead. Can Jones now take the race lead off him down there? Easier said than done than because Daly's already proven how strong he is on the brakes and get part of the circuit. Down towards Agostini they go. Jones is looking to the inside, but I don't really think he's close enough to make a uh, genuine attack there. Indeed, he just skates a bit wide in the middle of the corner, and he now has a fire up that park, trying to retake second place from him. Further back, that's Keith Towers, dicing with Liam McGill, whose car, as I said earlier on, doesn't look great, but it's still going fairly quickly. Alan Caulfield's not far behind these two. Towers down towards Agostini doesn't feel that he needs to defend there. Was that a mistake, maybe? No, McGill not close enough. Polywork flapping in the wings in the, in the wind. That car can't be the most aerodynamic uh, out there on the circuit at the moment. The leaders, though, make their way through the right hander at Wilson and down the uh, Bentley Strait. And Steve Daly, but look how close Ian Jones is. He's definitely going to get this slipstream, isn't he? So Daly is going to have to uh, defend down in towards the S's. Not leaving a chink of an opening on the inside. Now he goes to the middle of the road because Ian Jones has committed to the outside. They're both on the limits under braking there. Did they get it stopped for the right hander? Daly runs a bit wide over the grass. Oh, Steve Daly, get it back on the road. He does. Ian Jones uh, wasn't quite actually able to take advantage of that as fully as I thought he would be able to. And that might have been his last chance to do anything because we are on the final lap of the race and we're heading up. Uh, no, no, we're not on the final. Yes, we are on the final lap of the race. Make a bump. Uh, 15 minute races, of course, in the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cups. This is going to be the last lap, and I don't think that Jones can do anything at the final corner. What about Owen Hunter on Matt Parks? That's going to be a drag race to the line. Matt Parks uses an awful lot of curb, but Stephen Daly, with one of the best overtakes that we've seen for quite some time in this championship, is going to take his third race win of the year. He wins round number four of the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. Second place goes the way of Ian Jones. Third for Matt Parks. Fourth, Owen Hunter. And fifth for Tom Griffiths. Gordon McMillan is sixth, and Paul Hinson, Ben Huntley, Mark Skeets, Keith Towers round out the top 10 finishers. Outside the top 10, Liam McGill was 11th, ahead of Alan Caulfield, Wayne Flint, David May and Matt Flowers, then David Sharp, Mikey Doble, Mike Doble, 
Tim Scott Andrews and David Ashforth rounds out the top 20. Next up were Jim Barrett, Aaron Morgan, Brendan Murphy, Craig Jameson and Martin Gadsby, ahead of Phil Adcock, James Danbury, Nick Edmund, Craig Arkell and Andrew Woodbine, then Phil Sharp, Simon Welch and Colin Way at the back. Jason Bagley uh, was a non-starter in that one after his mechanical dramas in race one. What does that do to the championship standings there? Well, Owen Hunter is still second, 17 points now behind Stephen Daly, but Matt Parks, look at that, joint third now with Ian Jones, whilst Paul Hinson's consistent start to the season puts him fifth. Well, Stephen, what a great way to cap off the weekend. A brilliant battle and a great win, but that was mighty, mighty close. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Matt Parks definitely is a man of the match there for me. I mean, he held me off from pretty much start to finish, in fairness. I mean, I was trying, I was trying to dig deep, trying to get Matt early on in the race. Um, but he, he just had serious pace. I mean, the car just seemed planted this weekend. Um, so it's really nice to see some some really good challenges. Ian Jones almost got me on the last lap there. So I mean, we were we were really happy with that. Well, Jones, each second position, so very nearly a win as well. That was quite a spectacle. Yeah, um, so close, but not close enough. No, nearly had Stephen round the outside, but it was all we're both locking up, and it could have ended up very bad, but it didn't. So it's a good result. Well, Matt, third position after the win earlier. That's not a bad pair of results, considering how close the second race was. Fantastic, really. It would have been nice to have repeated the first race, but we can't have them all. Um, but it was still a good, clean, hard race between four people, four friends, effectively. And uh, it's a great, fantastic result. So after two brilliant weekends thus far in the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup, it's three wins out of four races for Stephen Daly. Can anybody beat the Flying Scotsman this year? Join us at Cadwell Park to find out.